right, so as Todd was saying, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, occupational noise exposure. Uh, what that means from you, what to look out for, um, some uh, some ways to tell if the environment that you're in, uh, if it's required to have uh, um, hearing protection um, in that particular work environment. So uh, if you want to go to the next slide. So uh, there's about 30 million workers exposed to uh, hazardous noise on the job site um, uh, as of right now. So 30 million workers should be out there using hearing protection. Uh, unfortunately, not uh, not very many many of them are actually using hearing protection uh, because they don't know that the noise that they're being exposed to is dangerous to their hearing. Uh, so noise-induced hearing loss uh, is one of the most common occupational hazards uh, for American workers. Um, you know, we still haven't gotten to the point in our society yet where people have really taken this seriously, right? Uh, you know, people are spending $127 or $130, $140, $200 on steel-toed boots uh, because they don't want to crush their toes, uh, but they're spending like 25 cents on hearing plugs that they don't ever wear and they don't ever actually put in, right? Like it's not being taken uh, seriously. Sorry. Um, so hearing loss uh, from noise uh, is a slow and painless process, okay? And what that means is, is you can be exposed every day over a five year period of time and it never actually hurts your hearing. You never, you never feel pain, um, but you have been damaged, right? So uh, unlike a work accident where, you know, you lose a couple of fingers, you, you get a cotton, a chop saw and you, you immediately feel that pain. You immediately see the damage that you've been exposed to. Uh, hearing loss doesn't necessarily have that effect. So you can be in an environment that, um, that is actually damaging to you, but you don't realize it until 10 years down the road when your wife is talking to you and you can't hear her anymore, right? Uh, we'll get into why that is in a little bit too. It's not your fault, guys. Uh, it's, the, it's our high pitch frequency. So, um, you know, if, uh, uh, if you must, uh, an easy way for you to, uh, for, for an easy way for you to realize um, that you're in an environment that can be, uh, damaging to your hearing is if you have to raise your voice to talk to somebody if they're three feet away. If you have to actually raise your voice up loud um, and they're, then they're less than three feet away from you, uh, then you're in an environment that can actually hurt your hearing and you need to be wearing hearing protection at that point. Uh, and, and again, hearing, hearing prevention, hearing protection, protecting your hearing in the work environment is one, and losing your hearing is 100% preventable. Go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, signs of hearing loss, um, if you're asking people to, like, I'm sorry, what was that? Um, you know, things like that, uh, that's one way of, of telling that you're actually losing your hearing. Uh, if you have to turn up the volume really loud on your TV, um, you know, obviously that's another way of telling that you're, you're losing your hearing loss. If people are talking to you and they have, uh, the, like, uh, for example, you have um, ladies in the office that are talking to you and you have a really hard time hearing them, um, that's sign of hearing loss. The first thing to go when you start losing your hearing is those high frequencies, those high pitch frequencies. So any of the high frequencies, you'll start losing those first. And unfortunately, um, hearing loss is not, uh, once you've lost that hearing, there's no way to get it back without some sort of um, artificial hearing aid of some sort. You go to the next one. So hearing loss 101. Uh, temporary hearing loss, uh, there's two forms of hearing loss, right? So you have temporary hearing loss, um, which is something that you just, you have like a ringing in your ears for, a, for a, an hour, a half hour, whatever the case may be, and then you have permanent. So uh, a sign of temporary hearing loss, right? Like, uh, I don't know if you guys shoot, um, but if you were to, uh, say, shoot a AR-15 with a loud muscle break on it, and you're not wearing any hearing protection, um, it can really hurt and damage your ears. Or if somebody comes up next to you with a bloat, with a uh, like a foghorn, um, and you you hear this like loud ringing sensation in your hearing, um, that can be a form of temporary hearing loss. Now, depending on how loud that volume is, it could do permanent damage. But temporary hearing loss is like a short-term exposure, uh, and your hearing returns after a given period of time. Like for example. Um, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. Sometimes you can have some, some really uh, sharp pains for up to three hours after, after being exposed. Now, permanent hearing loss is the result of exposure uh, to moderate or high levels of noise over a prolonged period of time. So we'll get into one of the following slides that's coming up. We'll get into like certain 
certain decibel levels um, over a weighted amount of time. So like 90 decibel levels over eight hours is safe for you to listen to. 95 decibel levels over eight hours is actually damaging to your hearing, right? And it's not the 95 decibels, it's the 95 decibels plus the amount of time that you have um, uh, that, you're, that, you're, that you're exposed to it. So, and like I said, permanent hearing loss, uh, your hearing never returns. It is, once it's lost, it's lost. Uh, this is just some OSHA standards. Uh, we can kind of skip through this really quick. Just so you know, these are the two standards in OSHA that talk about your hearing loss and exposures. Uh, the chart's actually on the next page, so if you want to go to that next page. Uh, so this is the exposure level chart that is on the OSHA requirements guide, or the OSHA, the OSHA standards. Uh, and you'll notice that there's some sound level decibel um, levels here, as well as the duration per hours that you can be exposed to them and still be in, uh, in what they require or what they say is the safe uh, listening level. So for example, if you're working for an eight hour period of time and the ambient volume that you're sitting in is 90 decibel levels, then you can work for eight hours and eight hours only. Um, and then once you pass that ninth hour, then you are now in uh, damaging hearing loss uh, fatigue um, section. So, uh, and then again, six hours for 92, four hours for 95, and then it just kind of goes on so forth and so on, right? Uh, and this is important for you guys to know because when you're doing end user, <clears throat> when you're doing end user um, evaluations and things like that, you need to be able to evaluate the situation that you're in, evaluate the, the exposure levels, and then provide adequate uh, hearing protection to, um, you know, to that particular end user. Uh, to protect their hearing so next one so this one is just kind of showing you um some common everyday things and, and how they affect your hearing so for example you have your lawnmower um your noise of traffic right um you know like uh, your motorcycle on a speedway snowmobile jackhammer you'll notice the jackhammer is up at 130 decibel levels obviously you should be wearing hearing protection if you're out doing some jackhammering uh, firecrackers, shotgun blasts, you know, rocket launchers, their rockets being launched, things like that. So this is just kind of a, a little graph that's kind of explaining like what those you know, everyday noises are and uh, how they affect your hearing, right? So like, for example, if you're on a jet ski and you're going to be out on a jet ski for more than three or four hours, you should be wearing hearing protection. And I don't know if any of you jet ski, but I'm pretty sure none of you wear hearing protection when you're out on a jet ski, right? But uh, if you're out there for more than four hours, or I guess it's uh, two and a half hours, then you're, you're, per, you're potentially damaging your hearing, right? So it's good stuff to know. Um, you can go to the next one. All right, so selecting um, hearing protection, right? So it's very important for you not only to identify a situation that requires the uh, hearing protection, but also being able to identify the correct hearing protection for that environment, right? And that's kind of why we're here. That's what we're doing. Um, and so there's a couple of different things that you want to look at when you're trying to uh, select the hearing protection for your, uh, for your, your customer or your customer's uh, end user, whatever the case may be. Um, and I, that is obviously you want it to be comfortable for them. Um, and comfort is very important because if it's not comfortable, they're not going to wear it, right? So if you have earplugs in and they can't hear, Right. What's the first thing somebody does? They're in an environment. Somebody's trying to give them direction. They take the earplugs out of their ear and go, I'm sorry, what was that? And now they're exposing themselves to that loud noise, rolling it up and barely putting it back in. I get people telling me all the time when they're out on the job site, all they're doing is just putting them in a little bit so that the safety managers, you know, uh, see that they have hearing protection in, but it's actually not protecting their hearing because they can't hear uh, and they don't and they, um, you know, they, they need to be able to hear in their work, their work environment. Uh, so obviously employee comfort is very important uh, level of noise exposure so like if you're in a if you're working on a, a, a you know jet engine um, it's much different than if you're working on like an assembly line doing like coke bottles or something right so you just need to understand the level of exposure and what's required um, you know hearing protection wise for that particular environment um, so the NRR of the device so that's that's the noise reduction rating which kind of goes hand in hand with the level of exposure uh, and then the type of work being performed. So uh, say for example, you're a welder and you're welding in a very loud environment. You don't wanna be wearing something that goes over your welding mask. You want something that's going underneath your welding mask, right? Um, so you need to be able to identify what the, the work is being done and, and the environment and the con conditions that you're in. 
uh, and then adjust the hearing device accordingly uh, for that particular environment. If they're out on a job site and they have a hard hat on, uh, then you need to be wearing hard hat mounted muffs or earplugs or neck neck mounted or uh, neck mounted uh, muffs or protection, I should say. So, and then your environmental conditions. I mean, if you're in Florida, you're working out in the heat, you may want an in-ear hearing protection versus an over-the-ear so that you're not sweating, right? So it's just you know identifying those kind of key uh, uh, you know key conditions. You can go to the next one. Okay. So we have a, a couple different types of hearing protection, um, which we will go through. Uh, obviously, uh, I am the walkers uh, manufacturer, uh, and so I'm a little partial to the walker stuff, so you'll see a lot of walker stuff on here. Um, but, uh, and there's also some other things that we'll get into as well, but um, there's actually three types of hearing. Um, you have your ear muffs, which is your over the ear. You have your in the ear, which is earbuds and inserts, and you also have like mounted muffs. I didn't put the mounted ones on here because I figured we'd just talk about it, but like you have like the hard hat mounted versions and things like that. So um, you can go to the next slide. So uh, over the head earmuffs, there's some advantages and disadvantages just like anything else out there. Um, so for example, um, the over the head, um, you have more protection at higher frequencies. Um, the you have variable levels of NRR protection on over the uh, over the ear versus in ear. In ear are, are usually um, pretty standard as far as what their decibel uh, ratings are concerned. Um, the over the ear are durable, long lasting, are reusable, um, and uh, can you can be fit like the over the ear can be fitted to a hard hat and things of that nature. So uh, disadvantages uh, could be uh, uh, it could be a little bit too hot and sweaty in warm environments. Um, and then obviously you have to clean them before, uh, before you use them with another worker, right? So like if, if, for example, if you're a safety, if you're a safety, um, uh, you can go to the next slide, it's fine. Uh, if you're like a safety manager and you have, you know, X amount of these on a wall, you have to clean them every day. Um, and, uh, and then your workers have to check them out essentially, right? Uh, so we have foam inserts, uh, and earplugs. Um, so, for example, what you're seeing here in the picture of that is a retractable earplug that goes around your neck um, and then you just pull it out, put it in your ears, and when you're done, it retracts back up. Um, but the advantages for um, earplugs, uh, you have uh, more protection at the lower frequencies. Um, you, uh, uh, they're very inexpensive and disposable. Um, you, they can be custom molded. You can do like custom molded versions for each worker. Um, and then there are some reusable plugs that are available. Uh, disadvantages, uh, you, you know, you have like grease on your hands and you're trying to roll these things up all day long. Um, it can cause ear infections and things like that. Um, and then 90% of people, and I'm throwing that out there because it's not quite 90, but it's a vast majority of people when they're using earplugs do not insert them correctly, right? Um, most people are not wearing them right uh, and it's not giving them the full NRR value that it's supposed to be giving them. Um, and so that's one of the big things with the, with the foam inserts. Okay, next slide. So seven elements of hearing protection. Uh, you need to measure, control, protect, check, train, record, and evaluate, right? So we're, we're measuring, obviously, we're controlling, we're protecting, we're gonna check to make sure our hearing protection is on correctly. We're gonna train our employees to make sure that they're putting on their hearing protection correctly. Uh, we're gonna record uh, the environment to make sure that the environment that they're in is uh, is requiring hearing protection and or uh, that the hearing protection that we're providing is giving them adequate uh, hearing protection for that environment. And then we're going to evaluate to make sure that all of that um, has been taken care of. Okay, next one. All right, so measurements, uh, how we measure. Um, so as far as uh, you know, as far as like doing the accurate measurements um, and the noise, we basically can do, can conduct um, noise surveys. Um, you can bring in a audiologist to come in um, and uh, measure the work environment uh, to see like what uh, you know what risks they're exposed to uh, and things like that. Um, but um, essentially, you just want to go out and you want to measure the noise that they're being uh, that they're being exposed to. Um, and then, uh, and then that'll help you select the proper, uh, the, the proper uh, hearing protection for that environment. So this is, uh, again, we're going back to the types of hearing protection. Uh, hearing, you have your earmuffs, you have your, uh, your neck worn, um, in-ear stuff, and then you have your earplugs, then you have the over-the-head, over-the-head stuff. So you have 
earplugs, uh, earmuffs, and then around the neck, and then the hard hat stuff. You can go to the next one. So we're going to talk a little bit of between the difference between active hearing and passive hearing. Um, and so active hearing is kind of like a key buzzword, and it's one of the things that we're, um, we're best known for, right, is our active hearing product. Uh, an active hearing product, what it's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to be cognizant of your surroundings, right? So you put your hearing protection on, and you're instantly protected from the, uh, you know, from the noise around you, right? But what it's doing is it's allowing you to hear all the ambient noise around you while still simultaneously protecting your hearing, right? So we're trying to do a couple of different things with active hearing. We're trying to protect your hearing. We're trying to protect your life and make you more aware of your surroundings, right? And then we're not only protecting your hearing, but we're actually amplifying it in certain ways to make you hear better than if you weren't wearing hearing protection at all while still protecting your hearing, okay? Now on the passive side of things, passive hearing, uh, what that does is it is literally just passive hearing. It goes over your head. It muffles sounds. Um, it makes it a little bit harder to hear. There's no microphones, but it can do uh, it can do the job. It's obviously less expensive than than an active hearing device. Next one. So active, you go to the next one. So active hearing products. So I typically start and talk to you guys a little bit about um, our Excel Bluetooth active hearing product. And the reason why I start with this is this kind of, this is kind of our flagship product. It kind of incorporates all the cool technology uh, that we've come out with. Uh, and so, for example, this this is a digital uh, hearing protection device uh, that is both um, protection and enhancement. So it not only protects your hearing, but it also allows you to hear better, right? So, for example, if you're on a job site um, and you're working, you got a uh, you got a jackhammer and you're, you're jackhammering up some concrete or something. And you got somebody that you're working with. Um, you can you can jackhammer up that concrete. You're protected. It's going to protect you. It's going to mute out that noise. And then as soon as you're done, you can look over to your buddy who's say you know 10, 15 feet away, and he's wearing the same hearing protection. You can carry on a conversation with him because those microphones are actually going to pick up your voice and amplify it and allow you to hear better. Right. Now this one, <coughs> excuse me. Now this one also has Bluetooth connectivity, so you can you can. Uh, take phone calls, you can listen to music, um, you can listen to the podcast, you can listen to the game while you're working, things like that. But primarily for job application reasons, it's, it's for being able to take, uh, take phone calls uh, and be able to take direction from people from remote areas, right? Um, so a couple of key features on here, it's got Bluetooth, like I said, um, you know, wind noise reduction, it's got an auto shutoff feature, you throw it off, you throw it in the back of your truck, uh, it shuts off after a couple hours. Uh, 26 NRR and it's uh, it uses double A or triple A batteries, two of them. It lasts about 80 hours before you have to replace the batteries. Uh, it's ideal for sporadically noisy environments, factory line workers, lawn and garden, woodworking, metalworking, long distance direct communication via Bluetooth. Uh, and when I say sporadically in, uh, sporadically noisy environments, what I mean by that is if you are in an environment that is only noisy. Um, occasionally, right? So you're, you're jackhammering or you're sawing chainsaws, things like that. This has a built-in suppression and muting feature, right? So it'll suppress, say for example, you're at 105 dB, it'll suppress that 105 dB down to 85 decibels so that it's safe for you to listen to at all times. Now, if you go to 120 dB, it'll actually mute it out. So if you have like a chainsaw and you're going through a tree, uh, it's actually going to mute out that sound until you're done going through the tree and then the microphones kick back in and you can listen. So if you're in an environment that is just 120 dB constantly, uh, then this isn't the muff that you want to use because it's just going to essentially be a passive muff at that point. And we do have other products that have all only suppression that just suppress. So that's why I say that. You go to the next one. So the Razer XV uh, has all of the same features, benefits, and functions that the uh, that the Excel BT has that I just showed you on the on the initial slide. It has uh, it has hearing amplification. Uh, we goes through some different frequency modes, so you can adjust the frequency bands that you're listening to in your environment. So when you have things working around you, you can you can adjust the way that you're you're hearing and listening to your ambient noise. Um, it is Bluetooth. Uh, this one has 31 decibel levels of protection, which is one of the highest, uh, actually it is the highest electronic um, 
decibel rating that you're going to get, right? There's nobody out on the market that has a higher DB rating on a electronic uh, hearing device, active hearing device, uh, than this one right here. All right, uh, and so this one being as though it goes around your neck and it's retractable, this is great for construction workers that are wearing hard hats, great for welding masks, uh, road work and demo, uh, great for under, under hard hats, like I said, and again, this does have Bluetooth, uh, so it is great for uh, taking phone calls and long distance communication via Bluetooth, okay? We'll go to the next one. So this is our Silencer BT. This is a active in-ear Bluetooth, a true wireless earbud. Um, and I know true wireless, you guys have heard that buzzword before. And if you haven't, um, I'm sure you will. Um, it's like Bose true wireless and LG true wireless and all that, the, the true wireless earbud or the true wireless technology. And what that means is it's truly, uh, each one of those earbuds are communicating to each other. Uh, allowing you to have a left channel and a right channel and stay synced so that you have total surround sound without having them actually connected via wire, right? So the technology behind these things are, is, is really pretty amazing, especially when you consider that these are active listening earbuds with Bluetooth True Wireless. So if you're talking to me on my right-hand side, my right earbud is going to pick you up a little louder than my left earbud is, and it's going to sync to make it sound so I can actually identify that you're on my right-hand side, right? in front of me, behind me. And we do that by, by way of directional microphones and all of our active hearing has directional microphones built into it so that you know directionally where that sound is coming from uh, so that you can, you can tell situationally what's happening around you, right? If you have a dozer that's driving and they hit that backup sensor and you know that it's behind you, you know, turn around and look and get out of the way, right? Forklift driving around, you know where that forklift is situationally uh, you know, in, in your space, you know where it's actually at. So it's a really cool technology. And also the, the uh, microphones that I'm, I'm saying uh, in this particular device are also in the, uh, are also in the other active hearing products that we have as well. Uh, so this is, uh, um, this is you, you, go, you can go ahead. I mean, it's consistent, uh, consistent, noisily, consistent, noisy environments. This is a great product for those because it suppresses only. So it doesn't actually mute. So if it's 110 dB, it'll take that 110 dB. It'll suppress it down to a safe listening level. Uh, but no matter what it is, it's going to suppress, not mute. Okay. So again, construction, metal working, all that good fun jazz. Our Razor series is a active slimline profile muff. Uh, this particular muff is our entry price point level muff. This is the one that uh, we sell just an absolute ton of. Everybody loves these. It's kind of our flagship product um, from, uh, from a volume standpoint, uh, mainly just because the price point is great, technology is amazing in them, um, and, uh, and, it's, and it's an easy way to get accustomed to wearing an active muff. And trust me, once you've gone with the active um, style hearing protection, very, very difficult to go back to a passive and try and communicate with people on the job site. It's extremely frustrating. Like sometimes if I accidentally, like if I, I left something and uh, like my hearing protection in the car, I gotta put some plugs in, it just drives me nuts. It just, I'll, I'll walk back to the car and go get my, my silencer BTs because it drives me nuts trying to, uh, trying to listen to people. Uh, these also have the suppressing and muting feature that the silencer BT has, or the, um, sorry, the uh, Excel BT has. Uh, so again, it's a sporadic environment uh, style muff. Uh, great for factory line workers, lawn and garden, woodworking, metalworking, things like that. Next. Okay, so this is a razor mounted walkie talkie. Now, what's neat about this is this actually mounts as an accessory to our slim passive, our, our slim muff, sorry, not our passive, our slim muff. Um, and so what this will allow you, uh, our muff to do is it's an accessory that plugs into the 3.5 millimeter jack on the actual muff. Uh, and allows for direct communication via walkie-talkie up to three miles, right? So it turns your headset into a walkie-talkie that allows you to talk for three miles. Uh, 22 channels, uh, 99 sub-channels, emergency channel. Um, it allows, um, you know, it's, uh, like I said, up to three miles light of sight, one mile city. And it has two, uh, two ways of uh, talking. Uh, you have your push to talk where you hit the button, uh, button on the bottom. And it also has voice activated communication. So you can, you can just talk directly into the microphone if you have it set up that way. 
it'll pick up your voice and then it'll start communicating and broadcasting on that channel. Now this is a GMRS FRS 22 channel radio. And if you know what that means, then I don't have to explain it to you, but if you don't know what that means, then that means any, you, know, you can go to like Walmart and pick up a 22 channel FRS radio and it'll work with this hey. device. Hey, you there? Uh, yeah, um, I'm here, I'm, yeah. I'm on a webinar. Can I call you? Go ahead, Sean. So, um, uh, so any, any 22 channel FRS GMRS uh, radio will work with this. So if your customer has um, radios already uh, in the field, uh, as long as they're using a 22 channel FRS GMRS radio, uh, then they can incorporate these walkie talkies into that, uh, uh, into their bank of communication with, with no problems, right? You just have to make sure they're on the same channel, all right? Uh, so these are ideal for sporadically noisy environments, uh, crane operators, lumber yards, things like that. Uh, and like I said, extreme long range direct, uh, long distance direct communication. So two way communication. So we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about our passive hearing pr uh, products. Um, the first one right here is our Bluetooth Passive Muff. Now our Bluetooth Passive Muff is unique in the sense that it actually is a passive muff, but it has electronics built into it. Most passive muffs out there are not gonna have electronics built into it, they're just passive. This one is uh, a Bluetooth passive, which means it doesn't have any microphones, but it does allow you to listen to phone calls or take phone calls, um, and especially in very loud environments. And one of the things that we've done that's kind of unique to this particular muff is we've created a boom mic that comes down in front, which is a directional microphone for you to talk into. So if you are in a very loud environment, say you're in like a pump room or an engine room, uh, and you need to call your office and get some direction, you can make that phone call and they won't hear you, they won't hear the engine, they'll hear you only. Uh, and then you can hear them fine because you're, you know, because you're not getting any noise piped in uh, because of the passive protection. Uh, it also has uh, amazing audio quality when it comes to like listening to music and things like that. So it works really well with lawn and garden. Uh, it works really well for very loud, noisy environments. Um, uh, you know, like engine rooms, pump rooms, things like that. Like if you're out chopping down trees, lumber and foresting, things like that. So, and again, you have long distance communication uh, via the Bluetooth uh, connectivity. And uh, it does have a, a windscreen on the mic as well. So if you're outside, uh, it has a windscreen on the mic so that it uh, doesn't pick up a bunch of wind noise in the background. Uh, so this is kind of our, this is our pro passive line. Um, this is a, um, a hearing protection line that's kind of a little bit higher quality than the, uh, than the entry price point level stuff that you get. It's just much more durable. Um, it kind of falls in line with our slim passive uh, 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 style. Um, and uh, it's, it's tried and true. It's been, uh, we've had this thing out for, for a long time. Um, you can beat, beat the tar out of these things. They're, they're, you know, basically it's all metal framed um, and, uh, and uh, very, very durable, uh, very durable uh, hearing protection. We'll go to the next one. Okay, so this is our Max Protect series. Uh, there's actually several different, several different sizes of this series um, that, you can, that you can purchase. Uh, the reason why we're showing this to you is because this is a dielectric muff. And what a dielectric muff does is it, it does not allow the conduction of electricity, right? So it's all plastic um, and it's great for people that are working around things that can arc um, to, to, their, uh, to, to metal, right? So, um, you know, arc welders, people that are working on, um, you know, power lines, things like that. A dielectric muff, if you're working in the mines because you don't want any spark, dielectric muff is perfect for, the, for those kind of conditions. Very lightweight. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good muff. It's just all plastic. Okay, you can go to the next one. And that's it. So, um, that's all I have for you guys today. Like I said, um, you know, we, we kind of went a little bit deeper than I normally do in the hearing, um, conservation side. So we probably went a little over where we're supposed to be. Um, but I just want you guys to be aware, uh, you know, there are a lot of environments out there that most people don't even realize that they're supposed to be wearing hearing protection in. And it's important for us as a community and as a, and as a society to identify those situations, protect our employees, protect our friends and family, um, and then not only protect them, but me personally, I'm a huge advocate when it comes to the active hearing. I think all employees should be wearing active hearing, uh, not only protecting their, their hearing, but protecting their lives. 
uh, and, and uh, being able to get direction. I can't tell you how many times on a job site um, we've been wearing active hearing and somebody has been walking into a dangerous situation and I've been able to, I've been able to, or somebody else has been able to be like, hey, watch out, and they actually hear you and stop and don't get ran over by the forklift or whatever the case may be. So, um, and we actually had a death here in, in Nevada. Uh, a guy was working around a dozer, it was a D11, that they were doing some excavating, um, and he didn't hear the backup sensor and the dozer ran over him. I know for a fact, had he been wearing active hearing, that he would have, it would have not only had he been hearing it, it would have amplified it uh, and then gotten his attention so that he can get get out of the way. So it's just so something to be something to be aware about or cognizant of.